What is going on, guys? Welcome back to our All Team Builder Dynasty in the Mountain West. We've got four bowl games on tap, and this slate for this Saturday upload is actually going to be one of the better uh, of the of the bowl weeks of the bowl seasons. Well, if you caught the action last week, you noticed we had a pretty tough go at it, and we are counting on Rocky Mountain State to come back and get us a W because we need it. Central Arizona ended up winning uh, the very last game that we saw in last week's upload. And now I'm starting to notice a little bit of a trend here. We started off watching some of our more weaker teams, I guess you'd say, with Colorado A&T and Oakland. Oakland College. And then now we're leading into Central Arizona. We got Rocky Mountain State on tap. We got the Orcas next. So all of our better teams are starting to come on late. Yep, so here we go. You see Oregon with that uh, speed option game they like to run. That's Justin Herbert is uh, manning down the fort there. Pretty good quarterback here, so we're going to have to tackle him, get some pressure, break through the line a little bit, and it's not happening yet for the Bighorns. 16-yard rush on that play, but good stuff there. Justin Herbert tackled four yards behind the line of scrimmage. going to be third and 11 now. That's a good stop. I like what I see there, but you got to have more of that. You got to be able to contain Justin Herbert and just not allow that read option to kill you because uh, they're already up past the 50 yard line here and it's only taken them about two minutes to get down there. So that's it's pretty rough. Third and 11, and here's a deep bomb. Pass is caught complete to Alex Ofodile for a touchdown. That's a huge strike for Oregon. He just fit that right in there. Yeah, it's a good throw. We got beat. We got beat on the backside. So you can attack Rocky Mountain through the air, typically. And, I mean, they've got a pretty good passing game for themselves. So we'll see, we'll see what uh, Paget can do here. Throwing first down. Good catch there by Lewis Fontaine, the backup running back. And then a little pass here to Donnell Henry, the fullback. He's actually going to pound his way for a 33-yard reception there, first and 10, moving the chains. I like it. I love it. That's what I love about their offense. You know, pro style is not very popular in college these days, but if you watch a team like, uh, I'm thinking of like Stanford or uh, somebody like that, like they actually run a deceptively creative offense. And you don't see it all the time, but it's pretty cool when it's humming, you know, so. Yeah, I would agree with that because, like you said, they don't they don't run a lot of spread looks. They don't run a lot of read option like Oregon. So it's kind of contrasting styles in this game. But like the good thing about a pro style offense is it keeps you on your toes. It can. Yeah. I mean, if they're, you know, if you're if you're using play action, you're throwing a fullback, you're getting the tight ends working, you're using misdirection. Like it can be just as hard to defend as a the wide open offenses as a one dimensional offense right that you're really good at yeah. third and seven for oregon as uh, rocky mountain state ended up getting that field goal and an interception down the sideline and he's got only one guy to beat and he is gone that's is a, that is pretty impressive because i thought he was going out of bounds body control i know i thought that tiptoe animation he was going to start doing just go out of, out of bounds and he turned on the jets Look at that. Open pathway to the end zone. Touchdown. Pretty, yeah. Good body control there for Quinn Foxworth. The free safety. So very, very ath good athletic type of play there. Third and eight after this big catch down the sideline. And then this pass is complete down at the one-yard line. It looks like that's Ofodile who got that touchdown earlier in the game. Now we're at first and goal. 10-7. Rocky Mountain State. Taylor Alley is in the game. Oh, yeah, the new, the uh, backup quarterback. So it was like Herbert got hurt on uh, that drive, possibly, because this was a hurry up. Yeah, it might have been. Might have been. Yeah. So they got the lead. We'll see if this morphs into that kind of like back and forth kind of game. We see Padgett here hooking up with brother. Yep. That's Marty out there. First catch on the game for 13 yards. Second and three now. Little screen pass here to Darnell Wicks, and he's got room. He's going to get to the sideline there. That's an 18-yard catch. Second and three now. They're up near the, think about the, what is that, about the seven-yard line. And then uh, this pass is complete to Nate Taggart for a seven-yard touchdown. I think that's probably his, like, his 12th, 11th or 12th touchdown on the season. So Taggart 
is uh, having a really, really good season. Yeah, we saw that with all the uh, the postseason awards. He made a few couple of those lists. So good year for the number one wideouts. Oh man, in this flip here, first and ten situation, and then look at this run, guys! Huge run. And who is that? Pretty amazing. That's that, not Royce Freeman. Who was that? They that, didn't even tell you. That went down as a uh, pass. Oh, right, right. So it was a forward pass. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. I mean, he was getting sacked, and then he just, just got the ball off. Yikes. But yeah, I mean, when Oregon's good, they're good. You know, they're tough to tough to defend. See so Freeman there at the carry, and then ah, second, going to the end zone. Second and three. That's Herbert with a 12-yard rush. They're, they're starting to really... Uh, kind of take control over this game. I feel like I feel like it's swinging in Oregon's favor right now. A lot, a lot of big plays uh, coming on Oregon's side of the offense. Um, touchdown there. What can you do? Yeah, I was gonna say. Unfortunately, Rocky Mountain's that kind of team. And you know they lost lost their last two entering the season, and they didn't play great defensively uh, in either of those games. So, oh, what a strike! To Tyler Machinsky for 34 yards. That's what touchdown. I'm about. Rocky ends. Mountain, 24 to 21. And the uh, Ram likes it. <laughs> but here's the thing: like, it's like you said, it's tight ends. They utilize the tight ends, but it's tight ends that can go vertical. Yeah. That can be in the vertical passing. That game. was Gronk material. That was second and one, and then this strike is complete by Herbert. First and goal now. Second quarter winding down, 14 seconds left, and then Malik, love it. Ha! <laughs> he wow. loves it. He loves it. Unbelievable. So with uh, 13 seconds on the board, that stinks because could have held him the field goal there. Turns into seven. So they are losing at the half. Yeah. So what are your thoughts right now after seeing all this action with uh, Rocky Mountain and Oregon? Well, I was gonna say before that Machinsky touchdown, I was thinking like they're that kind of team that I don't know they're pretty smart they're pretty it's like they're good on defense but they're also sort of soft for some unexplained reason oh Rocky Mountain yeah Yeah. like you can beat them on D right and it shouldn't really be that way you would think just looking at their players and stuff but it's a beatable defense it's all they run a lot of man coverage and you know they just get beat on some slant routes, and you'd think that because they run a lot of man, they would be able to stop this this running game. But you know when when no one's manning the quarterback, it's really difficult to stop that read option play. Right, or the runs uh, right here. Yeah, hit him up the middle. That's Casey Eugenio with that catch, first and goal now, and then Herbert is going to waltz right into the end zone. It's a six-yard touchdown run. It's going to be. 35 to 24, and now the odds are in Oregon's favor right here. The duck likes it. (laughs) First and 10, and then Padgett trying to look to go deep here. He's got some time, and this pass is going to be intercepted, guys. It looked like it hit the ground. Did it, though? Can we get a review on this? I want to see a review. They actually did not allow for a review. They just showed this replay. The ball was on the ground, but they ruled it an interception. Oh, wow. And then there was no challenge. It was unreviewable. And then Royce Freeman is going to pound it in for a five-yard touchdown. And now this this game is pretty much uh, on ice right now. Down 18 points, Rocky Mountain State. Seven seconds left to go when Wicks glides right into the end zone for a five-yard score. So... 42-31, 42-31, to 31, only down 11 at this point. But, you know, with, with it being the fourth quarter, you're going to have to stop Oregon on defense, which they have not been able to do. Right. They other need, than they that need one some kind of turnover, some possession flip. And I don't think it's going to happen. First and 10. Right. And then look at Royce Freeman go. He's got blockers ahead of him, going to get tackled after a 40-yard rush down to the sideline there. Got a third and 11 situation, and Herbert finds his man who's going to actually get the first down. That's Cam McCormick. First and goal now, and then pounding right into the end zone. That's Taj Griffin for a two-yard score. So not good, guys. 49-31 to 31 as we are entering the mid part of the third quarter. Third and goal, Rocky Mountain State. You need this touchdown here, and they're not going to get in. And that's Louis Fontaine on the rush. It's going to be fourth and goal now, and, well, you got to go for it. 
So yeah, try to get it back to 11 and then uh, hope for an onside kick. I mean, I would probably be onside kicking with, yeah. even with three minutes. Yep. And then Padge is actually going to find Nate Taggart for a one yard touchdown score. It's hard to get excited about that, but um, touchdown's a touchdown, right? <laughs> Down 12 yeah. now. Here's Oregon driving again. And there that's, he goes. That's Herbert again, and they actually stop him at the one. That's a 19-yard rush, and then uh, Freeman going to get that score. So actually, it's Taj Griffin going to get the score. So 56 to 37, guys. And Paget walking up the field. I think he's been being congratulated for a great career. But he's he's actually not happy. No, I mean that's a tough. Like they lost three games in a row. But you know he's gonna move on. He's gonna get a paycheck at the next level. So. Yep, uh, good good season for him. Good career at Rocky Mountain State. He's definitely gonna be one of the top quarterbacks selected. Uh, I am actually going to show you guys the uh, Madden 25 uh, draft with these with these players. So that'll that'll be fun. But uh, yeah. We'll see how Paget does with his uh, with his pro career where he gets drafted and selected at, but I think it will be a high pick. So, yeah. unfortunately for Rocky Mountain State fans, maybe I mean, his overall was what? I think it was like an 89, I think. Yeah, so it might not be a top pick. I think Let's he's see. like an 89. Yeah. I could be way wrong. He might be like a 94. We'll see. So here we got in the Hawaii Bowl, we got Louisiana Tech, Multnomah State. You guys know Multnomah, they want to run the ball. Louisiana Tech, pretty well-balanced offensive team as well. Conference USA, so, you know, like I always say, we're a legit BCS conference. Well, we were until we lost to Ball State. But, not that notwithstanding. I think this is a total mismatch here. Multnomah is probably the hottest team in the country right now. So, I think they're going to be able to handle the Bulldogs here. Uh, one would hope, because... We have not had a lot of luck here with, even with Colorado A and T having a plus matchup, a huge plus matchup against yeah. uh, Ball State, and they were unable to take care of business. Um, so I'm not counting Louisiana Tech out of this game, but Multnomah, it's hard not to pick. It's hard not to pick them with yeah. Sparks and, and uh, Steve Harrington here, as he's gonna just take this into the end zone with a little shifty, shifty moves. It's a 15 yeah. yard score. Probably could have just ran in a straight line. I think he would have gotten there all the same. Probably. But, all right. The Bulldogs have the ball back, and it's going the other way. Picked <laughs> off. Intercepted. Nice. Nice. Yeah, show off that football. Be like, I got this. You looking for this? Pace is happy. I got gotcha. you. This is, it's a stingy defense. First and 10, and then Sparks is going to take this read option. He's got blockers, and he's going to the sideline. He's going to get dropped. At about the 15-yard line, yeah, Sparks is pumped up. Even it's good to see him pumped up against an opponent like Louisiana Tech, where oh goodness, I think he got goodness. Pumped <laughs> Jordan Bradford with the they gave him a tackle for a loss. It should have been a sack. Yeah. Well, not really. Yeah, running, so. right, yeah, right, right. So right. they kick the field goal. It's going to be 10-0, and Louisiana Tech now is driving. Third and two. Jared Kraft takes the ball up the middle. First and ten now. 20. About 25 seconds left when they uh, snap the football here. And that is going to be a first down for Jamar Smith. Jamar. Oh, Jamar. I think it's Jamar. Well, I mean, I would say Jamar, but I'm going to go with what you said. Okay. Jamar. Alfred Smith with a two-yard re uh, reception here in the back of the end zone. Smith, 9 of 11. So, Multnomah... You know, yeah, not, I mean, they were like a lot of pressure on him. This thing was looking easy earlier, you know. Uh, it's definitely oh, tightened look, up. Look at Sparks with a huge run 21 yards right there. Sets up another first down. It's got 86 rushing yards already at quarterback. Well, this Mind is what you. we need here. So let's yeah. see, he slips through here. Gets more room for first down. Good, Good job by Sparks to uh, feel the pressure, recognize that no one was open. And pick up the much needed first down. Same play, and then Sparks is seriously going to run again and get another first down. Yep, good play. So, it's kind of what we saw with Oregon, I guess. Uh, a lot of running room for the quarterback. He's got 105 yards already. That's what we want to see. That's unbelievable. <laughs> He's got 105 yards. That's 
early part of the second quarter. There's and then go. Sparks is going to go into the end zone here for a nine yard score, 17 to three. Oh, 17 to seven, excuse me. Yep, Sparks is looking good. Third and six now, and then Smith trying to find somebody and got nobody there. No, the screen pass was just sniffed out, so he throws the football away. Louisiana Tech will kick a field goal there. They get that three points. It's going to be 17 to 10. They get the football back on a third and four, and then Kraft unable to pick up the first down. It's a good stop by Multnomah, but they are going to elect to go for it here, and they're going to pick it up. Let's see, call. Very Aggressive. I, I think it was uh, warranted, so I think uh, that was a good call. First and 10 now, about a minute and 13 left to go, and then this pass complete to Alex Woodall. Right on the Sheraton logo. Visit Sheraton Hotels. Free advertising. <laughs> have they been giving you money, Doug? Uh, no. No, they have not. They have not. I'm not partnered with Sheraton Hotels okay. at all. Third and 14. And then this pass is going to be picked off. He threw into double coverage down the sideline. That's, you cannot make that throw right there. 52 seconds left to go. And that big. That's, that's a big return, too, because uh, Multnomah can... They've, they can easily get some chunk plays here to get back into field goal range and, and go up 10. But this pass, what a throw. Sparks. What a throw. Good stuff. That's great stuff right there. I'm, I'm actually happy to see him actually make a, a pro-looking type of throw here. But look at this linebacker, unable to just – he didn't even come in. He just let Sparks get that yeah. first down. It's better than getting toasted, right? I guess. 115 yards right now for Sparks, about 15 seconds left. Well, now we're down to about 12 when they snap it. And then this pass complete to Harrington, who lost his footing. He was actually coming forward a little bit. Probably could have picked up the first down. Wouldn't have mattered anyway. They'll kick a field goal 20 to 10. Yep. And Louisiana Tech looks like they already lost the game. They're so disappointed. I'd be happy. Look at no, Sparks right here. Yet again, they were in the red zone. And then just going to pound it in for a 16-yard touchdown. I love it. <laughs> He's amazing. He really is. He's an amazing specimen. Yeah. If you want a guy to run the option on, in the whole country, I might take Sparks. Long field goal here. It's going to be good. They're going to nail, nail that thing. So 30-13, to 13, La Tech ended up kicking another field goal. They're down 17 points, and look at Crenshaw. This just, guy is an absolute animal. That's, no, Mike, that's Michael, Michael Richards. Richards. But so, this defensive line is full of just animals. I know. Smith looked like he broke that, and then he stuck his arms out and just pulled him back. Look at that. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Love it. Love it. This, look yeah, at, this, this, look this, at the defensive line, man. This and is the, a nasty defense. Jeez. I can't believe they lost three games. It's going to force fourth and eight, and then they're going to punt the football back. No need. Down 17 points. The game's pretty much over, guys, and Sparks just does his thing and puts this thing pretty much on ice 30 to 13 and then Harrington gets at this first down and more he's going to be into the end zone it's a seven yard score 37 to 13 here late in the fourth quarter Multnomah fans you got to be happy I think uh, I think it was worth it this year for them you know they were a popular team had a lot of love in the comments and it looked brutal at the start it's kind of sad that they got knocked out pretty much right away yeah but, I mean, how can you not like how they finished? Like, that was pretty amazing. They finished probably one of the hottest teams to ever play, really. I mean, the, the amount of points that they were scoring, the defense was shutting people down. Like, they, it seemed like they played out the rest of the season angry. Yeah. Like, they were like an elite team. So, I mean, that, and that's what we thought they were going to be all year. Uh, so, probably the best team in the Mountain West right now. Yeah, yeah, even okay. even probably even going forward, yeah, into uh, next season because we will end up simulating uh, only one more year. So yeah, okay, so two, right? Two. Yeah, sorry, sorry, two. two. We'll, we'll, be, scary, we'll be doing two years. All right, Armed Forces Bowl action: Middle Tennessee versus Maui. <laughs> Maui Honu against the Middle Tennessee Blue Raiders. A lot of you guys ended up taking the Raiders. They're a popular team. Interesting. Maybe that's because we didn't show a whole lot of. Maui, we did show them often. Yeah, they had a little bit of love. I mean, they uh, did not really play that great down the stretch. I know they had the game against Honolulu, and then Anchorage was kind of a sloppy game. So, 
And then we always hate on their offense, what they like to do on offense. It's, yeah, it's 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 pretty garbo. It's not as good as it could be. So that might be a, might play into why. But well, there's just a lot should of be a fairly evenly matched game. Untapped potential with with Maui's offense. So, yeah. but they're going to look to do some damage here against Middle Tennessee. Uh, kind of a lopsided game, in my opinion, because our Mountain it, West teams are. Yeah, I mean they're they're obviously a little bit better, but I could definitely see Middle Tennessee hanging around. 7-0 after this rush into the end zone by Sharik Muhammad. Actually, look at this play right there. That little chip block. They actually blocked. That's amazing. Wow. That's amazing. The the AI guys just decided to uh, take a good step forward here. But Huge run here. That's a, Yeah, that's a big one. Shane Tucker for 27 rushing yards on that play. Third and seven now, and the Blue Raiders are threatening. It's Brent Stock still. He's a pretty good one. Coach's kid. Hamilton on the reception, going to get dropped. So fourth and seven, going to kick a field goal. That was a pretty long field goal, and then they ended up uh, converting here. So seven to three, second and 13, and Clark Doherty with a 19-yard reception. Maui now in the red zone, third and seven, and this pass probably should have been complete, but he just overthrew an open receiver. Maui will kick a field goal, 10 to three now. Early part of the second quarter, third and six in Stockstill. Uh, finds his man there. That's Hamilton yet again, but this time a one-yard catch. Just can't really push the football down the field here against the Hanu. Going to give Maui the football back. Third and one, and then Kanan using his power to get some extra yardage. Ten-yard rush right there. Yeah, so I think Maui's offense is moving, at least. They're not getting sucked up in all these screen plays. Top oh. big throw there. <laughs> a lot of hang time on that throw. Ooh, that's a touch pass if I've ever seen one. Yep. Got it to Marco Edwards. We don't see his name all the time. That's a that's a late hit, too. Should have been assessed on the kickoff. Debatably. My goodness. 17 to 6. What? Debatably. I don't know. Debatable. Debatable. That's what I meant to say. We can we can make up words, That's right, guys? Right. You can make up your own words. Just type a bunch of crap in the in the comment section. Look at this, Ooh. almost intercepted, Kanan. Ah, I mean, we're we're taking a shot. You're up by eleven points. I mean, why the heck not? But yeah, big thing here. Let's see if what we got. Don't give the defense another chance. Fourth and fourteen, and then this field goal is gonna squeak through, and the right. Corner. Good kick. Yeah. Cato. Huge kick. It's going to be 20 to 16 down. Two scores is Middle Tennessee. And this completion only going to get two, uh, eight yards, but a fourth and two situation. That now. guy's a pretty good player. Richie James. Richie James. They're going to have to utilize him right here. Yeah. And Middle Tennessee has a pretty good offense in real life. IRL. We actually right. saw them play against Central Michigan years and years ago. ago. Yeah. And then Stock still is going to end up taking He took a shot, though. He's going to pick up that first down, but he paid for it right there. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Third and two now. They need this score, guys, to stay in the game because Maui doesn't seem to be stopped on offense. And what a throw. Another touch throw. We see, a, we see another one from a quarterback. Yeah. Good throw. Beat his man. I mean, that was a long throw, too. Put it right on the money. 20 to 13, first and 10. It's going to get picked up by... Is that Marco Edwards? Marco Edwards. Right. Right in. Third and four now as the side of the field flips. We're now in the fourth quarter. And not going to pick up the first down is Trent Oliver, even though he's got 102 yards. Yeah, first time he called his name. Too. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? And the thing is, like, he's got 102 yards, but this is the first time we're showing him. Well, he must not have done, must not have had any big plays. Right. Just, just a lot of just kind of plodding down the field. Right. Here's a five. Here's a four. Here's a five. That kind of stuff. Third and seven, 23 to 13, and then this pass complete down the sideline. There it goes, Terrell West. Third and seven now, and Stockstill is looking yet again to add another touchdown to his uh, to his stat line here because they really need it, and it's going to be dropped. That's an easy score right there. That's a touchdown. All right, they're going for it. Try to hang around in this game. Four minutes. Touchdown two. I think that is that uh, Richie, Richie James. James. Yep. There you go. Good player. You like him. I do. It's going to be All 23 right. to 20 now, guys, and we are in the middle part of the fourth quarter with 4.16 left to go. And now Maui 
ended up running the football down the field to kill some clock. About 2.04 left to go. I think this, pretty, this is pretty much it. If they score a touchdown here, it would be 30-20. Yeah, we need, we need something. Looks like we got it. It's wide open end zone there for Sharik Mohamed, and he's going to get in. That is a score. Maui's up 30-20. to 20. Got about a minute 53 left to go. Middle Tennessee State has to get a quick score and then get the onside kick. And then look at this. It's Rich. Is that Richie James? It's, I don't think it is. It's mm. number five. Joquez Bruce. Or touchdown. Ja Jaquez. Jaquez Bruce. Touchdown wow. from the Blue Raiders. And they are still alive. We got totally burned right here. Oh, my gosh. That's brutal. No help over the top either. It, so It only took him one second to diagnose that and then got a good bounce. Just, you know, didn't deflect off of a uh, Hanu player. That's nope. Jeffrey Manis. Yep. So good hands for Manis. We've seen him a little bit this year. So. Got a good win from Maui. Close Definitely win. Good. Yeah. Very, very close win. 30 to 27 is your final. You know, though, at this rate, we're we're gonna take it. Yeah, this is getting crazy. These uh these games here are coming down to the wire. Yep, so Maui with the W and the Armed Forces Bowl. I was surprised they didn't get a bid to play in the Hawaii Bowl. I think that would have happened in real life. Yeah. Because they want to eliminate the travel uh for that bowl game. If, well, if, if, if Hawaii is eligible, they usually get the Hawaii Bowl. Or actually, I should say always. Right. But so, but the thing is, is did they want they want Multnomah because they had a better record? That's ultimately why they took him. Yeah, exactly. In real life, they want to sell tickets. So Look at all this. Look at all this green out there. Kind of a weird matchup. Yeah, Hillsboro and Syracuse. So this goes... I don't know. Like We're, we're going to see if... Walters can kind of redeem his season in this game. I definitely think Hillsborough has more to play for in this game. Yeah, they, they got more mojo. They got they're trying to end more on a positive note. Syracuse is probably just coming down to Texas, and they're probably just hanging out, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, they should be used to Syracuse is in New York. Yeah, right. So they should be used to the the big the big lights, the big city. You would think, but um. Yeah, the storyline here for this game is Jerome Walters. A big run there, 19 yards uh, for him. He had blockers ahead of him. He utilized them perfectly. Just probably would have dove for the end zone. Everything that he had been through all season long, I would have dove in the end zone if I were yeah, him. Maybe, I don't know. But uh, see, so we hear, get, get a uh, touchdown here to Rydell Chavis. And Hillsborough's on the board first. 7 nothing. Their offense is starting to move. Yeah, it, like I think it just took... Walter some time, but uh, you know, like you said, he's got everything in this game to play for. Here's a big catch by Clay Austin for 29 yards. Just jumped right over that Hillsborough defender. He made a good play on the football. Second and nine and a big run there by Dante Strickland. That's 14 yards. So Syracuse actually moving the football on the splinter pads. Yeah, I mean, and they got a good offense too, like I was saying earlier. I love Dino Babers' offense. Like, it's amazing. He was uh, Jim, <coughs> excuse me, Jimmy Garoppolo's head coach at Eastern Illinois. Oh, I didn't know that. Also one of my favorite players. Well, and actually, has been my favorite player since college. Just right. go on the record. Well, you actually called Jimmy Garoppolo uh, being like a legit NFL I'll starting quarterback. I'll take credit. I was depressed <laughs> way back then. Him. But uh, Syracuse gets a touchdown here. Eric Dungy goes in for seven. So we got a tied game. Mid-second quarter, uh, Syracuse tacks on a field goal. So, Hillsborough down three. This pass is going to be a complete wide-open man. That's a good read by Walters. I'm I'm just – I'm really – I'm not really interested a whole lot in, in uh, Hillsborough football, but look at Ooh. this. Walters. That hurts. Why would you say that? Because it's true. <laughs> They didn't do a whole lot this season for me right. to be interested in Hillsborough football. Right. But right, right. they were I think they were our least shown team. Yeah. Other than Tacoma. Well, because their offense was just so like blah. But their defense, they right. played well on defense all year long. Yeah. I like their defense a lot. That's why it kind of just is blah to me. Yeah. But you know, I'm interested in this game because I want to see how Walters does, and right now he looks like he's playing really well. This might build up. Might bode pretty well for next year, too. 
I would have to say. 14 to 13 as Syracuse kicks that field goal through. That's Walters again with a nice throw to Paris Douglas for 14 yards up the middle on a slant. He threw that right in between two people, but dangerous. He ended up getting hurt on a uh, previous play, and then here's Cox. What would a Hillsborough game be without two quarterbacks? Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly it. And then Cox get that got that run for a first down, and then he throws the swing pass out to Rydell Chavis for a okay. touchdown. Cox is on the board with the touchdown, everybody. That's unbelievable. He's one for one for a touchdown. Wow. Controversy. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, oh, what do they do now? Do they do they keep Cox in? Do they just sideline Walters? It's a close game. What do you do? Unbelievable. 21 to 13 right now. Late in the second quarter here, about a minute, 17 left to go. And after that sack, Hillsborough head coach calls a timeout to get the football back to try to get one more drive to get another score. And Walters is back in the game avoids pressure to get hit and then this screen pass looks like it's going to get a lot of yardage and it does it's going to get 35 for richard kane yeah i saw the defender on the edge got flattened to help to, to spring him loose so second and nine and walters picks up 10 third and goal and then walters finds a receiver in the back corner of the end zone but unable to get his one foot inbounds. Cox would have made that throw. That, but that's a that's a that's <laughs> a great that. throw though. That is that was pretty good. Yeah, it's just I think the receivers just got to do a better job. Could be on that. So thoughts on this game? It's uh it's pretty close, even though it's twenty four to thirteen right now. But um, yeah, definitely could go either way. I think uh, Hillsborough looks like they got the attitude. Like I said, I think they're I think they're ready to go. I think they've. They've got this game on lockdown. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it right here because uh, you know they're up 11, or headed into the third quarter, into the second half, and their defense looks really good. Oh, oh wait, oh god, Whoops. I did I jinx them? Well, we have a tendency to do that. As we're talking, something happens on the field that contradicts. I just so. said their defense looks good, and then uh, it only took them a couple plays. And, yeah. So here we are. Here oh we are, boy. Folks. Oh boy. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Touchdown there for Syracuse quarterback. It's going to be 24 to 20. Kind of interesting that they didn't want to go for two to make it a three point game, but I mean, it is still early. Yeah, but still. Fourth and four now. Uh, Syracuse is going to get the football back as Hillsborough was unable to uh, convert into a first down. And then third and 11, and Ishmael is going to get 11 yards, but he's going to come up short. So Syracuse elects to punt the football back to Hillsboro, uh, down four. Walters made a good read. And he did. He picks Get up this credit. first down. Looking to put this thing out of reach here. 31 to 20. And a touchdown there to Cortez Colbert. That's probably the best end zone target that they have. Is he just big? I don't oh, know. Yeah, they just love huge. throwing to Colbert in the end zone. So Syracuse is moving yet again here. And they got a Almost first down there, second in inches, right in front of the goal line. So. I think I misspoke when I said it's out of reach. Eleven points is not out of reach. No, but yeah, it helps your cause. Second in inches, and you know it's the CPU in a shotgun formation, probably read option, but uh, what gonna get it right up the middle to Tyrone Perkins for a touchdown, twenty-seven to thirty-one. All right, so they're not oh, out no, yet. No, 26 to 31. They elected to go for two points, and they did not convert. Right, so we got a five-point game. Dungy's running around here. Gets past midfield. Four and a half minutes, and they're driving. So down to 340. Ooh, busted counter play there to Strickland. It's going to be third and nine now. Yeah, this game is definitely not over. Uh, third and nine, and they go with a handoff. Interesting call. Fourth and three now. I guess it. I guess it makes a more manageable fourth down play. I guess that was the thought process there. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm throwing. Yeah, I want the first down. I'm taking my two shots to the air. So fourth and three now, and then Whoa. a read option that does not get the handoff. It looked like that was a CPU glitch that they probably yeah. should have gotten that handoff. You have a brain fart. I guess. <laughs> so. But, uh, yeah, Hillsborough is going to take care of this W, guys, as uh, 31 to 26 is the final. So Walters gets a W. All right. In a bowl game. 
Wow. So he, uh, he's got to feel vindicated, I think. I would watch out for this team. I don't think they're nearly as bad as they played. And I think a lot of it stemmed from the quarterback situation. Yeah, a lot of goofy stuff going on um, at quarterback. Yeah. I mean, I said earlier, I was like, uh, I mentioned that they're kind of a team that could really go one of two ways. It's like, because our conference was so deep and there was, was a lot of parity. So I'm thinking, like, somebody's going to disappoint. Right. And I think our biggest disappointments in conference play are probably A&T and Hillsborough. I would, I would agree with that. From a win-loss record in conference. So, so I mean, what did you think? What did you think about the uh, the bowl games here for this week? We've got next week. We've got you and I. You're against Ohio State. I'm against Auburn. Yep. Um, uh, I'm thinking that Oakland. They're kind of in the middle. I don't really know where they're going to end up. A uh, and T has potential rebound, and then Central Arizona. We'll have to see Holloway's a junior, so we'll see what he does with the NFL. Right. Uh, if he's back, I think Central Arizona's a big player. Rocky Mountain State has to replace Paget at quarterback, but they got a couple options off the bench. I think they'll be okay. Multnomah State, I would pick as my favorite again, even though they let us. Well, they didn't let us down. But they let everybody else down. They made us look stupid <laughs> early. So uh, they would definitely they would be the preseason pick, I think, to win. Unless yeah. unless Stratton and Suggs are both back and suiting up for Honolulu, they might get the nod preseason. Multnomah would be right behind them. Yeah, I don't think that uh, Santa Fe State. I mean, obviously, we don't know what this bowl game is going to do yet. Santa Fe State could could lose this game and lose all momentum. Yeah. Um, with their recruiting class, but winning that game will definitely help out with recruits. Uh, but I don't, I don't think that through simulation that they're going to be as good yeah. as with, without you at the controls. It's going to be a lot harder for Santa Fe to do what they did this year. Right. But yeah, I, I do like, um, I do like Multnomah. I do like Honolulu for next season, and then. You know, Rocky Mountain State, like you said, is kind of in a little bit of a limbo right now because of quarterback situation. I don't know what the status is on Darnell Wicks. I don't know if he's an up, upperclassman or not. I'm pretty sure that he is, though. Yeah, uh, um, I didn't talk about Maui, um, but like Maui's kind of the middle of the pack team. Like I said, they can either go either way. They had a good season. It was a good competitive year for the Honu, and they're going to get most of their pieces back. So right. another interesting team to watch. Hillsboro, if their defense keeps up, Walters probably going to be a starter next year. I think Hillsboro can threaten. So I think that's where we're kind of where we're we're at. Okay. All right. And then uh, all right, guys. So next week we'll go uh, with our two games. So hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Now I do want to show you up on the screen real quick the results of the voting. So here we are. So we've got the Team Builder Conference vote. The Big 12 ended up winning the conference vote with 27 votes. The next highest would have been the ACC with 15, the MAC with 12, and then Conference USA, USA with 10, Sun Belt with 6. Kind of surprising. What are your thoughts on this? Kind of, kind of surprising to me because I didn't think that the American would have done this poorly in the in the voting so it's interesting yeah well I, you know you don't want to see the same thing twice um you know i we talked about it but it's, it's kind of like I, I do want to revisit that american group of teams like maybe way down the road like yeah. maybe we'll take over the acc and keep those teams in because one of the problems i was thinking with sort of like the smaller conferences in that you know the ace the american and the mountain west are kind of in the middle um and you see it with these bowl games. They, we don't really have very good bowl games. Right, right. So, like, we're sending Multnomah State to the Hawaii to play Louisiana Tech. <laughs> like, we can't even get the Conference USA champions right. in that game. So, it's kind of like, it is what it is. I mean, we did get the two BCS, but... And I know you can mod the game to get it to the mess playoff with the bowl matchups, but I don't really know how to do that. Yeah, and I heard rumor that, you know, sometimes it works and a lot of times it doesn't and it just really depends on like your Xbox or something or your I don't want to cr- Yeah, I mean, I just I don't want to 
do something. I don't even crash the game. I don't either because this is like we love the where we love where our game is at with NCAA football 14 and everything that we've got on there. We don't want to lose it. Well, so, I mean, I just like when you're in a dynasty and then some code, one piece of code is off. It could crash. Oh yeah, right. There's right, probably right, a way right, to right, do right, it, right, right. but I haven't looked into it. So. I think being in the Big 12 will help with that because, like, we'll have better opportunities to get ranked. Like, we'll have more conference prestige out of the gate for recruiting. And uh, we'll have better bowl games. You know, we'll get Russell Athletic, Alamo, Holiday. Yep. So So basically what this vote tells me, our subscribers are smart. They know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. You guys are awesome. Uh, But uh, Yeah, so Big 12, that'll be fun. Yep, and then uh, so as so you guys know where we're headed with the conference. Thank you for your participation and the voting. Uh, I was still would have liked to see some more votes in there. I mean, seventy-eight. That's like three hundred less than what we've been getting in view count. So maybe you guys that have that are watching it just don't really care. Maybe they'll they'll love anything that we do. So right. They didn't want to vote. Right. Right. I don't know. That's okay. Though. That's it's all right. This is a pretty good sample size. Um, yeah, it's actually a very good sample size. So. So appreciate you guys taking part of this. Uh, I know that it was fun for you, um, but we've got something coming tomorrow. So keep your eyes peeled for that. And we're going to talk about in that video what else you guys are going to be involved in with the Team Builder Big 12 conference. It's going to be big, folks. Uh, it's big. Buckle I'd your say, seat belts. I'd say it's bigger than 12. Okay. It's on the level of 13. Take it up to 13, right? Yep, exactly. Okay. All right, so that's it, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like if you did. And if you're new to the channel and you like it, love it, and you want more of it, you know what you got to do. Hit that little red subscribe button or my logo. And we'll see you guys on Sunday. And then uh, actually on Wednesday as well because Wednesday, I'm going to pull up my calendar here. Wednesday the 28th is going to be the simulation no is um fiesta and sugar bowl fiesta and sugar bowl and then on the 31st will be american conference simulation and then wednesday the 4th that's april 4th will be mountain west conference simulation so uh and then that'll wrap those up i will be leaving the videos and these uh playlists in this series up for quite some time but eventually i will be taking them down so that's all I got. You have anything else to add, sir? Uh, nope, that's it. All right, just be here Sunday. <laughs> all right, catch you guys then. Peace.